Hi everyone, welcome to my March favourites video. Um, I don't like to do favourites every um, month particularly because I find that I don't really find favourites every month. I mean four weeks is not that long to find something that becomes your you know, favourite. But I have a couple of top picks that I have been using consistently throughout the month month of March. Now in March I went to Arizona and I didn't really wear that much makeup so I seriously don't have any if not none makeup favourites except for some, some new purchases. So I'm just going to start off randomly with the first thing I pick up. Um, many of you may know I went to England back home in I think it was February, I'm getting my months mixed up, and I went to the Lush store and they have Lush in America but it's a lot more expensive if not, well obviously it's more expensive because of the dollar but it's just a little bit more with the exchange rate and stuff. So I just thought why not go to Lush. So I went to Lush, um, if you're from Birmingham you'll know it's kind of by New Street Station. And yeah, I was like, I haven't been there for ages so I was smelling everything and I remember when I first got into Lush, when I first tried it, I picked up one of their lip scrubs. Um, so I tried, I think it was the vanilla one that I tried before or the bubblegum one, but I picked up this one here. And this one is the popcorn lip scrub. And this is really good because most products from Lush go off super fast because obviously they're fresh and free from preservatives. But the lip scrubs in particular last for a long time. And on the Lush products you get a little sticker with a little picture of the person that made it. And I don't know whether these are accurate. I'd love to find out if they, like when you work there, whether you get your own sticker and you get to design what you look like, kind of like on The Sims. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, this guy's called Roman. And he made this lip scrub on the 29th of the 1st, so that would be the 29th of January in British time. And it goes off uh, next year, so it goes off um, March 2015. So they do last a long time, and it takes a long time to get through lip scrub. Um, this smells amazing. Does it smell like popcorn? It really doesn't smell like popcorn, it smells more like vanilla with a hint of popcorn but this is my honest favourite and I use this about every other day in the shower just scrub a bit on my lips when I'm um, kind of waiting for my cleanser to kind of sink into my skin and it just makes your lips plumper um, for a very short amount of time and it also kind of makes your obviously lip products go on a lot smoother so I like that and you know I think I'll always own one of these to be honest with you next product was something for my kit and for myself to be honest this is the Cinema Secrets brush cleaner and I've never been one to use, you know, go out my way to use a different brush cleaner. Normally I just use MAC or I use, you know, um, a little bit of alcohol just to get rid of any bacteria and stuff. But this one's really good, um, mainly because it smells of vanilla when the brush is dry, but also because it dries very, very fast and um, it gets off all the makeup. Like I have a white Zoeva brush and I use it on my clients and obviously when you use bronze or anything darker than the white hair, which is obviously easy, um, the brush gets kind of tinted and it's really hard to, you know, to get it back to its kind of white state. This, what I do is I pour a little bit into a cleansing bowl and then kind of rub it round and it just makes it white again and it's great for spot cleaning, it's great if you're working on clients and you want a clean brush immediately, it's just a really great product and Obviously it's a quick drying formula which is really really important and I was a bit kind of, um, what's the word, confused about how to use this because I wish it had a spray so you could spray it onto a paper towel or a cleansing bowl and then you know you can swirl it on your brush and what I don't like about this is that you have to pour it therefore you may use more product than you intend. Um, but the good thing about this is it comes in a ton of sizes. This was $18, I believe. It's, it was probably more than that, to be honest. It might have been $25. Um, but this size is the 8 ounce. But it does last a while. But anyway, I really recommend that. It doesn't matter whether you're a pro, whether you do makeup for a living, or whether you just want a good brush, clean, brush cleaner. cleaner. Um, so yeah, that's the last thing. Not the last thing, that's the second thing. <laughs> Uh, next up we have a soap. This is, I think this is called the porridge soap. Something to do with oats, but I'll put the information down below. And like I said, I was in Lush when I visited England and I was walking around and I was asking the lady, you know, what do you recommend? Because honestly, sometimes I don't even know what I want to buy. I just go into stores to get someone to talk me into buying something so then I can feel kind of accomplished when I come out 
at the store um, and she was like you know this is great for shaving it's really creamy and it's really kind of soothing on the skin so I thought I'd pick one up and I honestly really like it I'll be using it to shave my legs you kind of work it in it comes comes um, it comes out like this kind of um, like creamy rich lava which is really really nice um, and it's just a really nice gentle soap and what I love as well is that the kind of ridge the top of it has um, the texture as well so it's really nice to exfoliate um, the thing about soaps though is that it's kind of hard to store them while you're kind of in the process of using them because if you store them in your shower they're going to kind of shrink faster if you store them kind of by your sink you know it gets all grimy and oh I just that's the one thing I don't like about soaps but either way it's a really good product next up we have this La Roche-Posay um, Torilane and Torilene. Um, this is the Derma Cleanser and French skincare is not only amazing, but it's also harder to get hold of in the US. I know you can buy it online and stuff, but nothing beats going into a store, seeing it in person and feeling good, you know, purchasing something in person. So I picked this up when I was in Boots um, in Birmingham. I forgot where the hell I was then. And yeah, I was just looking at reviews and stuff online and I wanted something super gentle to remove my makeup. Now, I like to really use kind of two makeup removing products and then a cleanser and maybe I'll double cleanse so the most skincare I own is makeup removers so normally I kind of melt off my makeup with Bioderma or I use kind of something a little with a bit of the water consistency and then I'll go in with this and I'll kind of massage it into the skin really work the products and leave it on for two minutes get it all synced in and stuff and then you can either remove it with a cotton round or you can move it with water. Now, the thing I don't like about this is that it's not water soluble, which means it doesn't dissolve in water. So I was using it the other day and I think it was like the six something time I used it. And it's the first time I washed it off with water. And I was like, why is this like, it doesn't feel like it's off. It feels like it's still on. So I washed it off with water and then I got um, cotton round and I went like that. And it still had like foundation on it, which was a bit disappointing. But it says you can use with or without rinsing. But I just um, recommend, obviously, always, um, even though it's a cleanser, always go on with a cleanser after you've technically removed your makeup. But it makes a fantastic kind of first step thing to go on with because it's really good for sensitive skin. A lot of these French brands are amazing at not disturbing the acid mantle, you know, the top layer of your skin, and really kind of helping your skin and not kind of stripping it of any kind of... Um, you know, moisture, but yeah, you get the idea. I really like this no matter what type of skin you have. So I've been using the um, the Seche Vite or Seche Vite. I'm sure someone will correct me on that, please do. Um, I've been using that top coat for a long, long time and I love it because it has like a gel-like finish. It's very, very shiny. But one thing I do find with that top coat is that because it's so thick and gloopy, it's very easy, you know, to pile on the layers, obviously with the base coat, polish, top coat, whatever. Very easy, it comes off very easy by like peeling. And I'm not saying like you sit there and you peel it off. Literally the edge will lift up and before you know it, you'll be peeling all your nails off, which is, I'm very guilty of that, I'm so bad with that. So I've been testing it, well, I haven't been testing this out actually. I got the, um, the system by Formula X from Sephora. And it's basically like, I think it's a three step, um, nail care program, well not nail care but like um, you know the top coat, the base coat, um, the nail cleanser and then you can pick a polish. I really recommend it, I think it's only like $30 and it's you know it's a real good bargain if you want to try out um, the Formula X range. Anyway so in that set a couple of months ago I got the top coat and as you can see I've been using it quite a lot and I've been kind of switching back and forth with the Seche Vite and this one and honestly I do think this one is 10 times better because it really has more resistance to um, chipping for instance I get really impatient when I've just painted my nails and I will wait about 10 minutes for them to kind of dry but then obviously you know it's it's dry to the touch but you could like put your fingers in it and it would make a uh, you know a line with this it doesn't do that as much as the other one and also you know if you kind of do that or you're you know accidentally tap your finger on something which I'm sure a lot of people do it doesn't immediately start peeling or come off I do think it's very it's more longer wearing than the Seche Vite and I know that is a very long wearing formula and it still has that kind of gel like feeling it looks very gel like and it's just a great product so I do recommend that if you like that kind of 
gel like long wearing look and I'm sure everyone likes that because you don't want to really paint your nails every day. So I've also been using the Revlon Photo Ready Skin Lights Face Illuminator in 100 Bare Light quite a lot in my videos and also in real life. And I love this because it's a very, um, can you see, it's this one here. It's a very skin tone shade and it doesn't have any glitter in it as far as I can see, no. It doesn't have any glitter, I might have to get my magnifying glass out. But um, no, it doesn't have any glitter, it's, it creates a very natural shine. You can add it in with your foundation, you can wear it underneath your foundation, you can wear it on top of your foundation before powder. It's just a great drugstore product and what I like as well is that they don't just do one shade, they do five shades. They do a really nice gorgeous pink shade which reminds me a lot of Benefit High Beam. They do a bronze shade which would be perfect for kind of adding a couple of drops into your foundation for summer if you want more of a bronze look. Um, and yeah, they have darker shades for darker skin tones. They do a lot of good shades and I just think it's a great product so I'm really pleased with that. So from shopping on Sephora and kind of building up my points and picking out little samples here and there. I've actually been testing out a lot of samples um, recently. And I just think it's really good that the Sephora do that. Um, and sometimes you kind of, all you get is fragrance samples that you can pick out. But sometimes they have something that you really want to try, like a new CC cream or, I don't know, like um, a new serum that you don't really want to buy, you know, the whole thing and then, you know, take it back. So I think that's really good. And a couple of months ago, I got a 500 point perk and I normally wait until I can really find something that I really want because it takes a long time to get points like that. I mean, I don't buy stuff all the time from Sephora, but it does take a long time. So anyway, um, I think they had um, a fresh gift set with their best sellers and two of the products I didn't like, no. That's a lie. I liked their soy cleanser, which I loved, and I mentioned that in my previous favourites. And the second product which I love is the Seaberry Moisturising Face Oil. So much that I've actually purchased these 18 ounce, I believe, with the 18 ounce or the 2 ounce. The one bigger than this, basically, it's $18. I didn't want to get the huge one because that was like $40. And I don't use it every single night either. So I really like this because it's full of omegas, it's full of antioxidants, it makes your skin feel plump. I wouldn't say it's inadequate just to use as a moisturiser. Um, I would say you could mix it in with your moisturiser just to give your skin a little bit more protection from the you know, environmental damage and just to plump it up. But I do honestly think it's one of the best oils I've ever used. And I've used quite a lot of oils because I have dry skin. Um, just a great product and it smells amazing and um, definitely go and try it out if you're in Sephora just try a bit on your hand or ask for a sample because it's a really really great product mmm oh, it smells so good I wish you guys could smell what it smelled like because I'm so bad at explaining scents anyway I love this and I can't wait to get um, the bigger size in the post as well I also just to mention this as well I also tried the Boskia Tabs oh god Sabukia Sabak oh I'm not going to try and pronounce this because I honestly go brain dead as soon as I turn the camera on. Anyway, it's the one in the pink bottle. I didn't like this as much. I felt that it didn't actually deeply hydrate and it has a lot of irritating plant oils. This has a really small amount of fragrance which isn't um, as bad as this one. And the thing is with a lot of brands that try and be more natural, paraben free, blah 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 blah, um, they do put a lot of plant oils and they back up with all these like claims and stuff about how these plants from the rainforest do this to your skin and a lot of the time they actually irritate your skin so you know what can you do so something that I was really excited about this month is my new MAC palette which is a bit dirty from touching it and I got this mainly for my kit to use on bridal clients and stuff like that but I also got it for myself for tutorials not really for everyday use to be honest um, and I picked out a couple of colours and the, the picking process was very um, difficult because there's so many colours, it's like where do I start? But I asked a couple of recommendations from friends and stuff and I got a couple of warm colours for darker clients. I got some mid-tone colours, I got lots of highlight colours and I got, well actually I didn't purchase the brighter colours, these were actually colours I depotted. And I just actually bought some um, a magnet tape and I just cut off little squares so they don't fall out. So I just did that the other day so I could do this and it's not going to fall out. But yeah, I think this is a um I, I think this is a good palette because it does have some brighter colors there which kind of inspire you. And um, the other day I was looking at this, well not the other day, a couple of weeks ago I was looking at this 
and I just picked up this Grandis Grape Shade and that's what kind of inspired me to do my, um, I think it was my purple smoky eye tutorial that I did a couple of days ago, weeks ago, sorry. But yeah, anyway, it's, it's just a really good palette. You can pick out some brighter colours, you can do a really good neutral eye and it has a lot of matte shades as well. And the thing is when you buy a palette, you buy an Urban Decay palette, you buy, you know, Smashbox, it really doesn't have that many matte shades and sometimes they'll be like, oh, 10 matte shades and 10 shimmery shades. But it just, I'll never get 100% satisfied by the, the shades that I see. Sometimes they include too many light shades, too many dark shades. So it's, you know, it's, it's really hard to get something that you totally know you'll use every shade. But if you just do makeup on yourself, but you want your own kind of little palette, um, I would suggest buying um, a quad, obviously just four shadows. And you could just pick up some transitional shades because I do find transitional shades, the colour you put on first to blend the two colours, is honestly the most used shadow ever. And if you have something with all your transitional shades in a palette, it's super easy because if you're in a rush to do your makeup, you just grab your tra transitional shades and then you can pick out your single shadows like, oh, I want this shimmery bronze, oh, I want this like highlighter shade. And then, you know, just add it, or if you're in a rush, you want to kind of contour your eye, just use the transitional shade. It's really, really easy. You could pick up, um, depending on what colour you are, obviously, you could pick up soft brown, you could pick up omega, cork, um, what are the transitional shades? Um, Embark? I'm not sure. But anyway, um, there's so many shades you can get. Just look under the matte options. Um, not the matte too, just not the normal matte, or you can go for the satin. The satin's a little bit nicer than the matte. Sometimes the matte can be a little bit harder to blend. But anyway, yeah, that's what I did before I picked this up. I do have a quad of um, the MAC as well, which I do use on an everyday basis. So that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it thoroughly. And yeah, let me know if you have any favourites that I should know about, because I always kind of write down everyone's suggestions and I have a little book of stuff that I need to buy so yeah do let me know and let me know if you've seen um let me know if you've seen Noah or um Divergent because I'm going to see Noah tonight and I want to know what you think of it as well because that would be interesting to know even though I probably would have seen the film by put this video up but I just want to know what you think of it because I don't know like I've been hearing a lot about Russell um Crowe recently like interviews where he's a bit of a dick to the reporters and stuff and I'm like should I really go to this film and support this guy if he's just a massive dick? Like, really? But, um, regardless, I think it'll be a good film and my eyelashes are sticking together. I'm going to literally take off all my makeup when I get... I'm not going to go to a cinema like this. I was kind of just experimenting with, um, different, like, metallic shades. I used, like, this... What should I use? I used this kind of, um, purpley red colour on the lid. I used, like, black underneath it, blended out, and I used like kind of greeny gold there and I use like bronze underneath and I add lashes because it just looks too kind of grunge without them I don't know what I think of it I just kind of like to test out looks to be honest and I put loads of highlighter on because I love highlighter at the moment I feel like everyone is like kind of going crazy for highlighter and kind of shiny looking skin at the moment I don't know I guess that's a trend going on isn't it but yeah I'm just babbling now but yeah have a good day or evening wherever you are in the world and I'll see you soon. Bye.